Hey guys, what's going on? It's Adam from Spirited Systems, and today we're gonna to talk about the Delta bag. Before we get into the features, I kind of just want to talk about the why. Uh, so the why is really important at Spirited Systems. It's, it's the reason that we build anything, right? We make products that are functional for customers that uh, kind of have like a, like a no compromise mission set. And the Delta bag is no different. Uh, a good friend of ours who's a third group special forces medic came to us with a, with a problem set. He's an assault medic and basically he needed a med bag that did not exist on the market. He came to us with some design ideas and they were really good. So we translated that into a Spiritus product. Uh, so I wanted to give a shout out to him. Uh, I'm not gonna use his name because he's still active, but he, he played a big part in this and it is after all his design, uh, just kind of reimagined by us. So what is an assault medic bag and how is it different? Well, the biggest thing you'll probably notice is just the size. So if you're a medic, uh, you are you're looking at this and you're going, how do I fit all my stuff? Well, we're gonna talk about that. It's definitely a little bit smaller, but there's a reason. When you're an assault medic, uh, one, you generally have access to higher levels of care uh, faster than maybe if you're doing some kind of austere or a more traditional medical mission. So that, that gives us a little bit of uh, the ability to shrink the pack down some. We don't have to carry some of those long-term medical items. Uh, long-term care, you know, accessories. We can shrink our load down a little bit. Uh, the philosophy of medics is not one that I am completely uh, familiar with, but we do know from observing now that most assault medics split load or cross load a lot of the equipment onto belt kits, into pouches, onto uh, other members of the team. They really spread the load out because they wanna have access to that equipment. If you're a casualty and you go down, they're kind of using stuff out of your kit, off of your body, uh, or off of their kit to care for you before they even break into the, the bag. So the why is we needed something smaller. We needed a lower profile, uh, something that an assault medic who, you know, assault is that key word there, is actually inside the structure with the team as an assaulter. He is performing the same duties as an assaulter, and then he has this additional duty of medicine when you know when it's needed. So he has to be as trim as he can be, just like the rest of the assaulters, so that he is not uh, catching in doorways or you know over encumbered by the bag. So that's how this was born. So you just got to keep that in mind as we look through it. This is not going to hold, you know, the full loadout for an austere medic. So if you're a SWAT medic or you're an assault medic in the military. You have access to higher care pretty quickly. This is gonna be a great bag for you. If you don't have the luxury of that next level of care, you know, being provided quickly, then you're gonna have to either, you know, cross load equipment or you're gonna have to use something bigger. So let's get into the features. So the kind of the most striking part of the bag are these angled zippers. It's the thing that we get uh, the most kind of doubtful looks about when somebody first sees the bag. It's also the thing that people ask the most questions about, like why are that? Why are they at an angle? You know, what's going on there? It's actually it's actually kind of cool, and, and we're pretty proud of this design feature. These zippers are at an angle because when we made the first bags, they were all top-loaded zippers, and we were finding that through customer engagement, they were having to dig equipment out to get to something that was lower in the pocket. So the main reason why they're at an angle is that when we unzip this pocket and we open up the pouch, we are able to see everything that is inside that pocket all at once, which is great. So if you're a medic and you're trying to reach in and grab something very specific, your Krite kit or whatever, uh, you can just open the pouch up and reach down inside, immediately see where it is, identify it and pull it out without really disturbing everything else that's in that pocket. Another reason that they're you know, cut at an angle is because it allows the pocket to kind of naturally stay at a closed position, which you know, is great for 
medics who maybe have to move quickly uh, into another position or move to another casualty and you forget to zip a pocket closed, it's just gonna help keep those items kind of retained in there uh, and secure and covered pretty much at all times which is great too if there's explosive breaching going on or anything and there's a lot of particulates in the air, it's not all getting inside of your uh, inside of your bag. There are three pockets total on the outside and they're all lined on the bottom with mesh uh, and that allows uh, water to just kind of flow down through the bag and then out the bottom, uh, we have two grommet holes. So it will drain water uh, and, and kind of let water pass through if that's a concern for you. There's three pockets because we found that, well, one was space constraints, uh, three is a better number than four, four was too small, two was too big, uh, and it really fits in line with March protocol. You have you know, room for airway circulation stuff and your massive hemorrhaging all on the outside of the bag. It's, uh, it's also very easy to get into from the top. So if I lay this pack down as if I was going to treat a casualty, I now have access to my primary care needs on the top of the bag. Very easy to access all of the pouches you know, quickly. Everything is nice and organized. The pockets are all lined with loop so that you can put inserts in there as well. So our inserts work great. Our four loop, three loop, chem light, all those inserts work well to kind of organize all of the medical equipment that you might need in those categories and uh, keep everything secure. Again, if a pocket is left open inadvertently, you have the insert working for you and you have the uh, design of the cut working for you to keep things inside the bag. So going to the other side of the bag here, there's two pockets and they're flat. A lot of feedback regarding flat items that medics have to carry, casualty feeder cards, chest seals, things like that. Uh, a lot of the feedback coming from the field was they're always bent, where they're, they're bent or they're crumpled or they're getting a lot of pressure on them. Uh, there's really not a good place for me to store them. Uh, so we wanted to put a flat category on the bag and it makes sense to be on the back side of the bag because that's up against a plate uh, most of the time anyways. And so it keeps those things nice and flat and organized and you can access them when you need them and uh, just pull them out there. So there's two of those pockets. Uh, as you can see, there's no padding on the back side of the bag. And that is intentional. Because this is an assault oriented med pack, uh, we wanted the back to not have any padding or really any features because it's gonna be on the backside of uh, a plate carrier. And we wanted, we kind of opted more for it being trim and low profile. So there is no padding. It actually doesn't really matter, we found. Once you pack it full of uh, medical equipment, it's pretty soft, honestly, and wearing it without any padding there doesn't really matter. No one has complained about it. Um, we also have straps that come with the bag. They're very, very low profile straps. Again, they're meant to be worn with a plate carrier. Uh, so there's, there's really no frills to it. There is a, a, a very minimal amount of padding on the inside and the strap is basically just non-existent after that. They are attached using one inch metal hardware tri-glides. And that is so that you can remove them and you can replace the straps if you have something that you wanna use, some different kind of strap. Maybe you want something more low profile or maybe you want something at a higher profile. Uh, you can change the straps out as long as they use one inch webbing. Uh, you can just kind of weave them in yourself. The straps do uh, have full features. So they have an adjustable sternum strap. So you can see right here on this guy, um, the strap can be adjusted you know, up and down for different heights, and it can also be adjusted for tension across the sternum. Very simple to use, again, using tri-glide hardware. That hardware is plastic. Uh, and then we have a ladder lock, just pretty standard on backpacks for adjustability so that you can adjust tension on your straps and quickly release the straps as well. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the strap. Oh, one more thing. These straps do not interfere with your stock placement on your shoulder, which was a complaint in a few of the different straps that we tested uh, when we were testing the bag. So these are flat and these are the ones that uh, customers like the most. So they won. Congratulations, straps. Moving on to the other side of the bag here, or the outside, um, you can see that we have some handles here. And there's a handle on either side of the, uh, of the zipper. And that is because we want medics to be able to carry this like a suitcase. 
So if you can imagine a medic having to uh, basically pick this bag up in a hurry and move with it and it's still unzipped, he can just grab those suitcase handles and he can just pick it up and all the contents are still inside, you know, held in by tension and inserts and he can just walk away with it. So suitcase handles on that side. On the other side, we have a dot matrix that is drilled into the material as well as molly uh, that is cut into the material. And you can see here, I just have it set up with shot cord and some cord locks in the, in the dot matrix. So it just makes it super easy to lash things to the outside, whether that's chest tubes or uh, tourniquets. I also have uh, a dart just shoved in there into the molly. So again, just the whole spine is covered in that. It's kind of, you know, build what you want onto the outside. Uh, super easy to use. The top side of the bag has uh, a similar matrix on it, but this one is specifically cut to hold a set of trauma shears in there, just using a little bit of shot cord to secure them. And then uh, it also has slits cut into it for rubber bands. This was a piece of feedback we got when uh, trialing out the bag to Marsoc. Uh, they really wanted to be able to, to put a chem light on it to identify the bag. If they're gonna drop it at the final assault point or at an ORP, they just crack that chem light. They set it there with a support element or whoever is at the, at the final assault point and they can find it later if they, if they need to go back and grab it, if they're not necessarily bringing it onto the objective uh, initially. So that's kind of the outside of the bag. Now we're gonna unzip it. So something about zippers, if you're familiar with Spiritus products, almost every product we make has two zipper poles on every length of coil. And the reason why we do that is because if the zipper ever gets caught, you know, it's that annoying sensation when you're, you're running a zipper and it gets stuck on something. Uh, usually you can just overpower it and you're fine. Sometimes you're unzipping something and it gets stuck and you cannot fix it, or you don't have the time to fix it right in that moment. Well, it, no problem because you can always just zip the other zipper to meet it and still close the bag. So the Delta bag has dual zippers on every single pocket. Uh, so you don't have to worry about a zipper ever getting stuck and your contents being exposed or falling out. The inside of the bag, it's a clamshell design, opens up and it turns into a workspace for, for medics. Uh, we went with a book style clamshell because we found again in testing, if we do kind of that, uh, I mean, this is what I would consider, if we're talking elementary, this is hamburger. If it was in a hot dog configuration, which would mean that, you know, the zipper was on the, the clamshell piece spine was on the bottom and it opened towards you. Uh, we found that the bag was just getting too long. What was happening is medics are kneeling next to a casualty. They open the bag and now the bag is as tall as the casualty and they have to really like maneuver the bag a lot to get to the stuff they want. And then it's also positioning them much further from the entirety of the casualty. What we found is that in small, especially urban environments where they're packing into a small CCP, maybe multiple casualties, this shape was just better. It just worked better. It enabled the medic to move the bag around a little more easily and also for him to be closer to all the contents in the bag, as well as being close to where he wanted to be on the casualty. So. The bag is completely lined on the inside with loop. And uh, if you don't know what loop is, I'm just gonna make this noise and then you'll know what I'm talking about. So that stuff. So loop uh, is provided on both sides. That way you can completely configure the bag. Uh, we knew right away medics, you know, medics, snipers, breachers, canine guys, all the weirdest guys that you'll ever meet in your life. Uh, all of them very particular about how their stuff is set up. Like they don't want you touching it, they don't even want you to look at it. But we knew that if we defined anything, you know, we would, one guy would love it and then, you know, 99% would hate it. So we wanted to make it completely configurable. And as you can see on the inside of this bag, I mean, this thing is, is configured for, uh, you know, an assault medic. So we have all of those items that uh, when we start going from that initial care and then we're starting to expand on into more of an extended extended care, we, uh, we have that stuff inside the bag, protected, you know, all of your vials, your, your needles, tubing, you know, saline, all that stuff is in here. It is, it has a little place for it because you get to determine where it is. 
One of the big pieces of feedback we got is that every single medic out there has a different level of training, different equipment uh, selection, right? That is provided for them uh, in different missions. So they all kind of need to set it up differently. So we came up with a system that was just, you know, loop on the inside. And then we have these med tray inserts that are hook side. And these can be configured any way that you want them to be configured. So they have, uh, again, a dot matrix on them that allows you to basically put shot cord through it however you want. So shot cord, and then we also have one inch slits in it too. You can put webbing through there if you need to, but essentially you can put these with whatever med kit you need, however you want. And then you just attach them to the inside of the bag, wherever you want them to go. And now you have a completely customizable interior that you, uh, you get to choose, right? It's like a Goosebumps book. You can choose your own ending. I'm gonna put this back in. But so yeah, so that's the, that's the hook loop interior that everybody wants. Uh, maybe didn't even know they needed it until now, but you have it, so. Each side also has uh, four small tie down loops uh, inside of it. And these are just, again, just a lash down important equipment. You just tie those down to these little guys, four of them on each side. And then there's one larger uh, loop at the top. Uh, really, we put those in there because we observed a lot of guys hanging the bag, right? Uh, something we didn't really think of, but through observing, you know, people going through training and getting feedback, a lot of times medics are hanging their bags up in an aircraft or in an aid station, and uh, they, they have a workspace so they can kind of get it up on the wall out of the way so it stays nice and clean. So we put these two big loops in here so you can carabiner into it, hook it up. Uh, we even saw a very clever uh, guy using his hemostats to clip it into to a helicopter, which was really cool. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's the tie down loops on either side. And then the spine is similar to the outside. It has the dot matrix drilled into it and you can use, again, shot cord to just attach uh, the items that you want to stay on the spine. And, you know, just to demonstrate, I have a headlamp tucked in here. Very easy to just, you know, get it out. Uh, and then also very easy to re-secure it you know, something nice and tight and it's not gonna be falling out of your bag. Again, if I pick this bag up, everything is just kind of secure on the inside. So I'm not worried about the bag, you know, spilling contents if I open it up. And again, those suitcase handles. So if I was to have to move, you know, I would, uh, I would just pick it up and just move with it. Uh, again, through observation, we've seen medics are, are often having to work within the confines of the assault. So if there are casualties, they are not able to just say, hey, I need an hour to work on this guy. They would love to have an hour to work on a guy, but the assault must go forward and the CCP must go with it. And so they're gonna be given a time hack and they're gonna be told, hey, we have to move in 30 seconds. So they are going to have to prioritize and something that assault medics do really well is they have to prioritize their time. So they're gonna go, hey, if we're moving in 30 seconds, I have 20 seconds left to do this last thing to this guy. And then he needs to be packaged to move. So he's gonna be able to just grab this bag by the handles and just move with the casualty as the, you know, as the aid and litter team kind of pulls the casualty in the next space. And uh, he's gonna just be able to flop the bag back down and, and start working again, which saves him a lot of time of having to re-secure a bag and put it on or anything like that. So. That's kind of how that works there. It is a medical bag by design, but I kind of wanted to talk about some of the other interesting use cases that have happened uh, just by getting these bags out into, out into the world with customers uh, through this trial period. We've been doing it for about a year and some change, having these out uh, with you know real world end users, just using it, providing feedback, you know us making small changes. And uh, a couple of those use cases that we got back were actually, uh, being used for, the bag's being used for exploitation kits, like site exploitation kits. So guys have these kits, they get issued and they come in a Pelican case and it's a lot of, you know, electronics and things like that. And they, uh, they don't want to carry around a giant Pelican, who would have thought? So they uh, use our inserts and they can kind of just put all that stuff into this bag and then use it as an exploitation kit. Uh, we've also seen it being used as munitions go bags for vehicles in Africa. Uh, so the guys will just load this up with inserts, 
You know, we've seen them with full of 40 millimeter uh, grenades and inserts, um, magazines, things like that. They just load them up, throw them inside the, the trucks that they're using. But I also wanted to point out that for the direct consumer, this is a great bag for, you know, any use case like that, that I just mentioned before, but also just as a medical pack for your vehicle. Uh, so we have kind of a spread of products that we have encouraged people to have medical stuff in their vehicle. A vehicle is a great base of operations. I mean, I drive my vehicle every single day. I drive it to work. I drive it wherever I need to go. I'm, sometimes I'm putting in some pretty long miles or long hours and lots of miles. The chances of me, you know, interacting with somebody who is in a medical emergency are pretty high, to be honest. If you spend a lot of highway time, you're, you're kind of in that zone where you're probably gonna see a car crash and you might need to stop and help somebody out. This is a great kind of one-stop shop for medical stuff. You can carry a lot of stuff in this for a civilian use case, right? It's just in your truck. It's uh, you get a black one. It doesn't even look that you know crazy. It just looks like a backpack, and you grab it. and You have everything you need in you know one one spot. So I think it could be really great for that. The one thing I'm gonna just say on this video that it's not gonna do well is this. It's not gonna carry this well. This is a 15 inch, I think the new one's 16, but this one's 15, MacBook Pro. It is not gonna carry this well. As you can see, it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit in there, all right? So if you're a consumer and you're like, hey, I wanna buy that new bag, it looks really cool, and I wanna stick my MacBook Pro in there and it's 15 inches, it's not gonna fit. I'm not gonna talk about all the electronic sizes that could work, smaller computers will probably fit into it. Uh, our marketing department is great at showing you things you can put in other things, and they are going to do a graphic or something, they're gonna put it on the website, so you'll be able to see kind of what could fit and what couldn't fit. Uh, but yeah, it's not gonna be the best backpack. I'm just gonna say it out loud. It's a clamshell design. Um, although I know you guys will use it as that. And we actually have a couple of Spiritus employees who have been using them as, you know, kind of carry on travel bags and stuff like that for a couple of months. And they seem to like them. So not what it was designed for, but it could probably work for that as well. Just not with a 15 inch MacBook. So that's it guys, that's the Delta bag by Spiritus Systems and thanks for watching.